Fox 34 Football Friday, presented by Cardinal Sports Center. It's 10 o'clock, and it's time for Fox 34 Football Friday. Yes, indeed, here we go tonight on the big show with the Cooper Pirates. We're still in 2019 form in their opener against Capra. And Friendship has a new QB under center. We'll get to know Tigers quarterback Chad Ferris. You know, the unknown is probably the biggest challenge, and uh, hopefully we, uh, you know, we'll figure it out quick. But first, we'll take you out to Lowry Field to see how Seth Parr's bunch fared against Friendship. And welcome everybody to week five here on Fox 34 Football Friday. I am Bobby Boucher. <laughs> it's my favorite part, always to find out who you are. And I'm <laughs> Kurt Kaiser. I, I am the water boy. Kurt I, I'm the water boy. Yes, yeah. that's who exactly who I am. Our game of the week is friendship and Coronado between Mississippi State commit Sawyer Robertson and a first year's Tiger QB, Chad Ferris. Let's head out to Lowry Field and check out the action. Coronado taking on friendship as they get ready to get going. Early on, no score. Sawyer Robertson, he keeps it himself. He scrambles for 21 yards and the touchdown. The Tigers would respond to Sawyer's play as they were behind early on, but would come back through the air early in, or early in the second as Chad Ferris gives it to William Bayuth, who takes it in from 23 yards out. That caps off a nine play drive to tie the game up. A little bit later on, Robertson gives it to Antonio Malone, who keeps those legs a churning, mm. and he gets in from nine yards out, 14 to seven. Mustangs on top. First half winding down, and the Mustangs offense was out for blood. Robertson tosses one over the middle to wide open. Eli Martinez, Coronado of 21-7. They would go on for the big win, 42-14 over Friendship. Yeah, quite the performance for that quarterback, for Seth Parr and his Coronado bunch, especially the play of Sawyer Robertson, Kurt. That's right, Sawyer, no doubt about it. He is the real deal, the uh, two-sport athlete. Uh, lighting it up for the Mustangs tonight. Our John Sokoloff is live at Lowry Field. John, just how good did, did Sawyer look tonight? Kurt, he looked like an SEC quarterback. He looked like a Mike Leach quarterback already. And in the spring, as you guys both know, he committed to play for the former Red Raider head coach. He's playing baseball and football. He's not sure which sport he likes more right now, but I think um, football is definitely in the future for him if he wants it. He started out really strong tonight, looking very poised in the pocket. He took over in that first half with 206 yards, a passing and rushing touchdown. Uh, he looks bigger. It looks like he like maybe even added some weight to take more hits, stiff arm in some guys. He seems like that power five QB. So in the spring, he said Mike Leach's pitch to him was asking if he wanted to be the leader in the country in passing yards. And then after that, he said the decision was easy. But also, again, playing baseball for that great program and that program that made it to the College World Series in back-to-back -back years. And on the COVID side of things, too, guys, both teams have really been practicing those protocols really well. I, got, I went out to uh, Wolferth earlier this week to see head coach Jay Northcutt, and I asked how many positive COVID-19 cases has he had. He said they've had less than five, less than they're able to count on one hand. So that's, that's pretty good. Both coaches wearing protective equipment in front of their faces and no one else really on the field tonight really taking those uh, protocols well. And Coronado rolling past friendship, getting that win 42-14. to 14. And Sawyer looks like he's ready for the SEC, guys. And reporting from Lowry Field, John Sokoloff, Fox 34, Football Friday. All righty, thank you very much, John. LCP at home tonight, taking on the horns from Caprock. And I tell you what, the Pirates last year had one of their best seasons. In fact, their best season in school history. Pirates marching down the field early. Cooper Lefebvre, quick slant to Trevor Browning. You betcha, good for six. The PAT was bueno, seven nothing Pirates. Cooper defense and championship form, Kirk Kaiser, they are good. Check out Luke McCarthy bringing down the ball carrier for a minimal gain. Late second quarter, Pirates posting a shutout, get on the board again, this time punching it in from a few yards out. Many expected a shootout. Instead, the fans were treated to a defensive battle. Strike up the band, Kirk Kaiser. Buckos <laughs> with the go. win. 18 to nothing. Boom, baby. 
All right, band looks awfully happy to be playing. Estacado on the road tonight. They're visiting Andrews. Early on, the Matadors would take first blood with this smooth quarterback sneak. Watch this mm, by TJ Steele. Ooh, yes, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Six nothing. Mustangs took it personally. Running back Brock Tijarina. He would uh, hurdle over a defender for the quick first down. Yeah. That leads to a deep end zone TD pass as Marquise Lawrence would come up clutch. Andrews takes the lead 7-6. Estacado puts on the pressure. Eddie Galasca is an impressive stop this game. Much like the Kentucky Derby, Mustangs off to the races, leading 45-38 in the fourth quarter. All righty, Kurt Slayton Tigers back on the field after two weeks of virtual learning. That can't be fun. Hosting the bold gold first quarter antelopes with the ball. Ashton Jefferson moving on up. He's off to the moving races and look at him go, Wheezy. Yes, sir. <laughs> he is a good one, isn't he? Few plays later, Jefferson again for the easy score. Post up seven to nothing. And now the Tigers. Well, the fans were fired up with the bad snap. Give the bold goal the ball again, and they score again 14 0. Antelopes. Slayton trying to get something going tonight. Aiden Ramirez, though, picked off by Nathan McDaniel. And he's going to take it all the way the other way. And it's not looking good for Lawrence Johnson's bunch. At last check, the Antelopes running away from the Tigers, 40-7 to the score in the fourth quarter. Hello, Mr. Antelope. Hello. We stay on the Antelope Trail. We head out to Abernathy next, and we get there with 13 seconds left and a half. Wildcat offense trying to hit Paydirt. Anthony White playing like Stephen Gilmore as he breaks up the pass. It was TJ Chambers doing all he can. However, not enough ticks left on the clock. Both teams will go to recess. Check it out, Rob. Last year we gave our award-winning concession champ segment, you know. Well, let's just say Littlefield's marching band is this year's halftime honorees. It's gridiron counterparts have seen better days. Home team leads it 34-12. That's in the fourth quarter. Band looking for it. Never underestimate a good band. Floyd Ada taking on Roosevelt. Second quarter, 24-0 Eagles. Handoff goes to Jacob Torres. He finds an opening. Here he comes. Down the near sideline, he's going to walk the dog. Two point, no bueno. Didn't really matter. They were up 30 to nothing. Floyd Ada with the ball, but uh, not for long. We've got a fumble. fumble. I don't know why I like to say that, but I do <laughs> that way. Trace Weller recovers. The drive would stall. Whirlwinds finally get on the board in style. 48 yards out. Wow. Alexis of Alvarado. Eagles were not done. Kenyon Taylor. He finds the nest. Check out the moves. Cracking a couple Woo. legs. He's in for the score. And, uh, well, Roosevelt, they're 5-0. Oh. 58-5, Kurt, was the final. Wow, they are having a fantastic year. Still ahead on the big show, we hear from Tech head coach Matt Wells on why Keyshawn Carter is playing at a high level. He's got speed. High school analyst Garrett Luff joins us. Well, we're going to dissect Lubbock High's big win last night. And Leveland looks to bounce back after a bumpy start. How the Lobos fared at home against Tampa. You're watching Fox 34 Football Friday with Rob Verby, Kurt Kaiser, John Sokoloff, and Brady King. Fox 34 Football Friday. First and most comprehensive, this is Fox 34 Football Friday. And welcome back to Football Friday, another 5A team that had to wait quite a while to finally hit the gridiron plain view. Yeah, the Bulldogs hosted the hostile herd from Hereford in their opener. Hereford had a tough week last Friday against Estacado. Here we go. They're hoping to make up for it on homecoming. Second play of the game, Bulldogs' Justin Dominguez rips a big 80-yard run all the way to the White Faces' two-yard line. You can call them the White Faces, the hostile herd. They go on to score 6 0. Herford now with the ball. Quarterback Oscar Guerrero down the sideline for a big, big gain right there. And uh, he'll later take it himself, a keeper for the lead. It was 7 6. Herd. You call him the herd or the wife agent? I like the herd. Okay. Yeah. Plain view on the move, trying to air it out. Picked off by Slade Rodriguez. I love that name. And that leads to a big TD from Noah Brown. There he goes in a bigger Herford lead. The hostile herd with the dub tonight, 42-36 the final. And we head over to Owls Stadium. Hale Center hosting Olton. No score late first quarter. Owls would strike. Hunter Thompson hooks up with Zedrick Guerrera. He takes it on in. The two-point conversion was no good. It was six to nothing. 
Hale Center with the lead at that time. Late second quarter, same score. Olton cracks the scoreboard. Aldo Vasquez, direct snap, finds an opening, takes it to the house. Two points fail, and the game will be tied at six. Owls all the wiser. They win it in the end. 34-12 <laughs> to 12 was the final. Uh, let's head down to New Home where they are hosting the Roscoe Plowboys, Kurt. Yeah. Leopards with the ball and Cash K Money Starkey takes it into the end zone for the early score. New Home up early. Leopards next possession. Bodie Stewart. He's going to show off the cannon. Right here, he's going to find Keaton Pearson. And that is a dun, 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 big gain at the end of the first quarter. On the other side now, fourth down, who else? The dynamic duo. No, not Batman and Robin, Stewart to Pearson. Touchdown, new home. Leopards feasting on the Plowboys. Sounds like a bad night back in 2002 for it me. Does. All right, 46 to 12 was the final. Lockney hosting the Odessa Compass. Let's see which direction they were headed. The Longhorns <laughs> bobbing and weaving just like the Rams of 1999. Here we go. Lockney with the ball near midfield. Handoff to Michael Rodriguez. He walks the line. I walk the line. Big game yep, for yep, the Horns. Yep. That would set this up. Next play. Anson Rendon takes it to the crib. Two-point conversion is no good. It was six to nothing, Lockney. More from the horns now. Nathan Cisneros finds an opening on the right side and he finds the end zone. This time, the two-point conversion would work. Anson Rendon follows some good blocking in. 14 to nothing, Lockney. These Longhorns doing what we hope the Texas Longhorns will not do tomorrow. They win it easily tonight, 67 to nothing. Oh yeah, a lot of alliteration from us sports guys, huh? Leveland <laughs> taking on Pampa. Their greatest challenge is stopping this man. Cornelius Landers, known across Texas as social media uh, star Peanut. Peanut moving the chains as he bobs and shifts through the Lobo defense. It heats up the popcorn at the concession stand. Ooh, speaking of peanuts. Yeah, yeah. we're told it, it's the best in West Texas. It smells good. And they are this week's unofficial concession champ. We're bringing it back. Yeah. Harvester show off their other weapons. Jack Studebaker connects with Jesse Alvarez for the first score of the game. Young Lobuette looking concerned. She's looking concerned, I guess. Bryant White is looking for the end zone at third and long, and he hangs on to it, races into the corner, right into the Valley of the Sun. LHS within one. Same score now, Air Jordan, hello there. Air Jordan Lacey scampers right into the end zone for Pampa. And this game, perhaps a preview of the Tokyo Olympics, Kurt. <laughs> Maybe. No idea what that means. Unbeaten yeah. Harvesters win 50 to 26. <laughs> All right, we are now joined by high school football analyst Garrett Luft. All right, Garrett, Lubbock High sure didn't look like the team of the last two years last night. Good win for them. Man, they look very impressive. Bryson Smith at quarterback throws for five TDs, over 300 yards. And last time Lubbock High really threatened people and made them kind of nervous, they had a really good guy at quarterback. They had a strong receiving core. Last night you had Darren Mendez go for nearly 200 yards, and then Noe Tiarina is a guy you've heard of, and he's been pretty good for them. He's kind of been the one highlight they've had the last few years. He caught two scores as well. But Great Spring was 3-0 coming in here, and they had put up a ton of points on people. The defense deserves some credit last night as well. I, I'm buying Lubbock High right now. It's a 4A team, but an undefeated 4A team that they really pounded on last night. Yeah, I, I'm going to drink the black and gold juice. I'm, I'm happy for them. Uh, Coronado and Friendship, uh, Garrett, a big-time matchup to open up the big school. Uh, the big school is playing tonight. Uh, what did you see at Lowry tonight other than, I guess, Sawyer Robertson looking like a, a big-time quarterback? Well, that's the easy answer, right? right? I mean, I could just say Sawyer Robertson and then go off the air. And go deeper. Like, oh, yeah, that's go great. Deeper. But, <laughs> that's why we pay you. I'll go say deeper. The, I'll say the same thing I said about Lubbock High. Anytime that Seth Parr has a defense that is elite, you, you better watch out because you know the offense is going to be good. It, he's as Mike Leach just as you've got in the area as a head coach. Can the defense compete? And, yes, you had a new guy at quarterback for friendship uh, in Ferris, and you had uh, you know just a lot of guys that uh, looked kind of rusty on offense, that honestly, for friendship. But the defense of Coronado had a lot to do with that. That, that was a drubbing, and I did not expect that whatsoever. Coronado from the, from the outset really was all over them. Uh, I, I don't know what to say for sure about where friendship's at, but I'll tell you, Coronado looked very scary to me tonight. Garrett, let's talk about uh, Cooper. What did you see out of the Pirates tonight? You know, they only had 160-something yards of offense, uh, and that was kind of bizarre, but you lose all the senior running backs. They were deeper than anybody at that position. They don't have those guys anymore. Cooper LeFevre's back at quarterback, but they struggled to move the ball. They got five turnovers. They were in there into the field all night long. Uh, they, weird play, too, that Ryan Fife, their defensive player, Two safeties in one half. How often does that happen for wow. one player? 
But that was four of their 18 points because they missed three field goals and the Pirates had a really hard time moving the football. But they also slowed down a Caprock team that usually puts up a lot. So another great defensive performance. I was surprised by all the defense tonight, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, Garrett, I was out actually shooting that game for most of the first half, and they shot themselves in the foot a couple of times. Cooper did with a couple of penalties. The defense looks like a championship team, but they're missing a Cadillac running back this year. Yeah, and I think they'll find that over time. But I, like I said last week, I was, I was so wrong about my prediction that the offenses would look sharp because they've had all these reps, and the defenses haven't had scrimmage moments. The defenses uh, I mean, really shine across the area all night long tonight. Uh, and it was impressive, too, to see a lot of the 5A teams from our area go and, and beat up on some 6A teams. That also happened with Tascosa beating Abilene High. Uh, that, that 2 5 eight district looks nasty. 3 5 eight, Wichita Falls Rider pounded on Midland High tonight. So we, we've got some quality districts here in both Division One and Division Two of 5 eight. All right, Garrett, thanks very much. We'll check back with you a little later. The friend now, back to Fox 34 Football Friday. Welcome back, everybody. The Friendship Tigers squaring off with Coronada and their season opener as we speak, or it just wrapped up a little bit ago. Jay Northcutt's club is going through a lot of turnover. Kurt. They sure are. Chad Ferris is the new man under center, filling the shoes of current Texas Tech quarterback Donovan Smith. Our John Sokoloff caught up with Chad this week. Man, it's it's really exciting. I'm, I'm excited. I love this team. I love the group of guys, and I'm just ready to go out there and be the quarterback for them. It's be a challenge for sure, but but I, I'm ready and I'm ready to take take it on for sure. I mean, also he's a D1 athlete, just amazing, amazing physical talents. But mainly, I would say just just the hard work it takes to be as good as him, and just what it takes to lead lead a team. Just his impersonations of what the other defensive coordinators are thinking, or just how he says those or something like that. Uh, yeah, I would say Rocky Four. I would say right now Parker McCollum, country. Our defense, we had a scrimmage last week. Our defense looks really awesome. They they shut them out, did a great job. And our offense, we we look good in some areas, but we still got a we still got some stuff to clean up, but I'm excited. I think we're going to be great. You know, Chad completed uh, a high percentage of his passes in, in the scrimmage, and, and they're just really doing well, and uh, we're looking forward to getting in a game situation and uh, seeing what they can do. He dies, Kirk Kaiser. <laughs> That's what I've heard. That's from Rocky IV. That's yep. right. And then, and then Rocky stares at him like, <laughs> you're going to have to deal with wow, me. Wow, that was like the rock, the way, yeah. you, the way you yeah. looked there. Mm. You got it. Yo, Adrian, I did it. All right. Shane, Stephen, and Lubbock High, they did it. They've they certainly did. turned the page, Kirk Kaiser, at That's least we exactly hope. That's exactly right. No doubt about that, Rob Verby. They have already matched their win total of last year. The Westerners came out firing against Big Spring, and they did not look back. They led 27-0 at the half. Second-year starter Brandon Smith certainly looked like a vet. He threw for 357 yards and five touchdowns in the win. Three of those went to Darren Mendez. The other two went to Noe Tijerino. The steers of Big Spring certainly no slouch either. They came into this one at 3-0 and and looking very impressive on the year. Next week, Shane Stevens Club will hit the road for the first time this season, and they'll be taking on Fort Stockton. Now, back to Fox 34 Football Friday. And just like that, hello conference play. After one game and a bye week, the Red Raiders hosting UT tomorrow afternoon right here on the huge 3-4. And the Horns feeling pretty good about themselves, I would imagine, coming off an easy win over UTEP. Tech, in the meantime, they were okay after a two-point win over HBU. The wise guys in Vegas favoring the Gents in burnt orange by 18 points. Here's the head man on speedy wide receiver Keyshawn Carter, who had a monster game last year against the Horns. I think Keyshawn played well last year against Texas. He played well against Houston Baptist. Um, my guess is that that propelled him into offseason where he had a really good offseason. He gained weight, noticeably stronger um, and bigger. You know, we, we've all known about his speed. He's got track speed. Um, obviously, if you're on West Kitley's track team and you're a contributor uh, to be in, you know, in a national championship. The guy's got um, the guy's got speed, but he's playing with a lot of confidence. 
Yeah, I thought Alan Bowman did a nice job last week of spreading the wealth, Kurt. He had yeah. several different receivers with multiple catches. Uh, Carter had, a, I think, at least three, maybe more in that final quarter when they, they got their last score to sort of put the game away. Um, when you look at tomorrow's game, I mean, you need Alan Bowman to be sharp, but you need him to be even sharper. You know, you've got to yeah. hit those guys wide open down the field. Alan Bowman needs to be the quarterback he was in the first drive. And, and keep doing that. Rob, yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see how an extra week helped because this was the right time for an extra week to get ready for this game. After you saw what you saw week one, you needed those two weeks to get ready for this one. Yeah, I think you did. I've, I've always been confused by the early bye weeks. I know this year is different. Right. I get it. They right. built in bye weeks in case you can't play a game because of COVID-19. But you make a good point. I think because even though they got the win, they did stub their toe a little bit in that game against HBU. And they've got to do a, a lot of fixes on that defensive side of the ball and try to get, you know, after the quarterback a little bit and try to contain Sam Ellinger because Bailey Zappi lit him up. You know, 600 yards in total offense. And, and Kurt, you know, I mean, last year the game in Austin, Tech jumped out to a 14 nothing lead. And then I think they lost the game off the top of my head, 49-24. Right. And UT was really doing anything they could on offense. And that's what I fear tomorrow, Kurt, that Rob, they can do anything offensively. Yeah, it, it's also interesting to see how the team responds, not just to changes with the X's and O's, but psychologically when you have a short win and then, and then UT coming in for a big game, they need to turn it around and forget about the last game pretty quickly. Yeah, they do, and, and, and hopefully they will. And uh, hopefully you can have some type of atmosphere tomorrow with the Jones. I mean, this is yeah. a big game when, when UT comes to town, but it's a 2.30 kick right here on Fox 34. First and most comprehensive, this is Fox 34 Football Friday. And we're back. Coronado with a big win in their home opener, beating Friendship 42-14. to Unexpected defensive battle as the Cooper Pirates keep Caprock out of the end zone all night, Kurt. They get the win at home, 18-0. All right, Estacado falls just short in a heartbreaker. They lost 45-44 on the road against Andrews. Bold gold outracing the Slayton Tigers in their first game back, 46-7. The Antelopes run all over the Wildcats in Abernathy, winning 34-20. The Roosevelt Eagles soaring through the whirlwinds for a big win. They get the dub, 58-5 at Floyd Ada. And the hostile herd spoiling Plainview's season opener, winning that one 42 to 36. Five games for Roosevelt, no TDs allowed. The Eagles wow. tame the whirlwinds 58 to five. Like the 85 Bears, Kurt. Very, very similar. Yeah. Let's bring back Garrett Luft, our resident high school football analyst. Garrett, as I just mentioned, tough loss for Estacado and Andrews, one point. Man, they've been on a, on a just a, a horribly difficult schedule so far, but they were down 18 with only six-plus minutes to go in that game. They they score enough to get themselves in position to tie the game, and they muff the extra point. That's ah. how they lose that one. Oh, wow. Painful way Rough. after all that comeback. But I think there's still encouragement there. They got Bushland next week, who is a very tough challenge for anybody. Uh, Coach Cluley's team, though, they're, they're going to face just about every nasty, tough team you could face uh, from the panhandle down to, to, to south like Andrews like they did tonight. I, I think their record's going to look really ugly uh, when they get into district play, but they will be very battle-tested. You saw a ton of T.J. Steele again tonight for them. I think uh, they know what to do and get him the football, and they ought to be successful. Hey, Garrett, uh, let's take a look at our game of the week for next week. I really think that uh, it's got to be the ball game between Cooper and Coronado. Uh, and I'm, I'm a little interested to see how things pan out because tonight Cooper, like we said earlier, had no offense and Coronado had all kinds of offense. Uh, but Cooper gets to host that football game. Uh, I think it ought to be one of the best ones that we see. And then hopefully uh, it's a little more competitive than what you saw tonight in that Coronado friendship game. But uh, I think that's the one to keep an eye out on. And again, also that Estacado Bushland game is going to be two very good teams. I think that Estacado could really maybe get some momentum headed in the right direction going in the district if they can pull that upset. All right. Thank you so much, Garrett Luft. Rob Verby, let's take it to the house. We'll take it to the house. My <laughs> IFB is like blowing up in my ear. I might as well be honest about it. I don't know what happened. Anyway, we're out of time. So long, everybody. It just... I, I, I.